Please use hand rolls where available and watch for tripping, slipping, and falling hazards. Finally, please do not go onto the grassy areas when taking photos during the ceremony. The flights before you today are named after Air Force pioneers who have made significant contributions to our enlisted heritage. They have special meaning to all airmen, especially those who are transitioning from civilian to warrior airmen of character. Today's graduates make up these heritage flights and will continue to shape our Air Force. And now I'd like to take a moment to inform you on specific flight locations on the parade field. As viewed from the bleachers from your left to your right, the first two heritage flights to pass in review today are from the 323rd Training Squadron, Blue and Roy Flight. Next are Airy, Wright, and Barnes Flight from the 322nd Training Squadron. In the center of the parade field is the 737th Training Group Drum and Bugle Corps, Murray Flight from the 321st Training Squadron. The flight selected to carry our national, state, and territorial flags is from the 323rd Training Squadron, Cody Flight. They are followed by Gaylor Flight and from the 322nd Training Squadron. The last four flights to pass and review today are from the 331st Training Squadron, Kisling, Peterson, Finch, and Smith Flight. At this time, please find a place to sit. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the entrance of our official party. Please remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Knox. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, in all the earth there is no greater nation than the United States of America. Your blessing has caused her to be that city shining on a hill, bringing the truth of freedom and liberty to the world. But it has not been without cost. The price has been paid in blood for the cause of independence and the freedoms we all so often take for granted. We are here to celebrate with these airmen who today graduate and move on into the United States Air Force. Although we are the youngest of the military branches, we ask you to create in them an infinite desire to walk in the hallowed, bloody footprints of Valley Forge, the blood-soaked sands of Normandy's beaches, or in the bullet-riddled skies over Europe, on the jungle tra trails of Harawa and Okinawa, down the frozen footpaths of Korea, and across the danger-ridden rice paddies of Vietnam, from Afghanistan to Iraq, and wherever else men and women stand ready to lay down their lives to save power. Lord, give these graduates the courage to defend, the will to win, and the stamina to stay the course. It is only through your power that we can ever desire to be great. As you bless these parents, as well as every man life has been lived as an investment in the United States Air Force, so that we may continue to fly, fight, and win, assist these newly graduated airmen in carrying the torch that is being passed on to them with a sense of integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. And we ask this in your most heavenly and divine name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Knox. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's basic military training graduation parade. We would like to introduce our distinguished guests, beginning with the host for today's ceremony. The Commander, Air Force Basic Military Training, Joint Base in Antonio, Lackland, Texas, Colonel Jason Crothers, accompanied by his wife, Major Heather Crothers. The Superintendent, Air Force Basic Military Training, Joint Base San Antonio, Blackland, Texas, Chief Master Sergeant Chris Simpson. Today's Giving Officer is the Chief of Staff, United States Air Force, the Pentagon, Washington, D.C., General David Goldstein, accompanied by his wife, Dawn. From the 32nd 
37th Training Wing, the Commander. 37th Training Wing, Joint Base, San Antonio, Lackland, Texas, Colonel Roy Collins, accompanied by his wife, Jennifer. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Colonel Brothers and Chief Master Sergeant Simpson will make, make a special awards presentation. First of all, say welcome to Military City USA. It is the greatest 
professional honor of my career to be able to serve as the commander of the Air Force Basic Military Training Mission for the greatest Air Force in this, on this planet. I want to really highlight what you just saw and specifically talk about our military training instructor corps and what it really signifies, what it really means to wear that blue robe to be that master military training instructor. Our MTI Corps is drawn from the best of the best of our senior NCOs and your NCOs across this Air Force. We're talking about a Corps that is renowned for their professionalism, their selflessness, and their dedication. Their charge is one that carries significant weight. They are charged with transitioning citizens and turning them into warrior airmen. It's a charge they take seriously, and it's one I can tell you that they take such amazing pride in, and they do it with style every single day. Prideful professionals delivering excellence every single day. And so as I talk about those master, that military training instructor corps, let me tell you what that really means to wear this blue rope today that technical, technical Sergeant Steinbeck has worked so hard for. You heard it earlier from our narrator. The best of the best. We have a little under 600 MTIs as part of our core here. Only 10% of those can wear the blue robe. And I will tell you today, the standards are so high, so rigid, as they necessarily should be, that we're actually only about 6% actually get to wear that blue robe. So that tells you the time, the energy, the dedication, the all-in that Tech Sergeant Steinbeck has brought forth for us today. And so it's with that in mind that I think she deserves a party round of applause.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the national anthem.
gentlemen, please stand for the playing of Rubbles and Flourishes.
Squadron representing the Medal of Honor recipients this flight, led by Master Sergeant Chris Hemsworth, hometown right. Flint, Michigan.
congratulate all of our squadron honor graduates as well as their families. Basic military training honor graduates distinguished themselves by being rated in the top 10% of all airmen graduating in their class. The exceptional personal dedication, integrity, service to for self, and sustained excellence these airmen displayed throughout basic military training earned them this outstanding distinction. As the Airmen march forward for the oath of enlistment, we would like to thank the families and friends who are here in support of the Airmen graduating today. Your words of encouragement helped motivate these Airmen to seven and a half weeks of basic military training. On behalf of the United States Air Force and Air Force Basic Military Training, we extend our thanks to the many families and friends of America's Airmen for the support of your Airmen and the greatest air power the world has ever known. And since 1953, 
No soldier, sailor, airman, or marine on the ground has been attacked by enemy air. We want to ensure that when anybody on the ground in enemy territory hears jet noise, they never look up. Because they know it's us. And to gain and maintain air superiority, many of you will become special forces. And you will secure airfields around the world in undercover places to ensure that we can move mobility aircraft every two and a half minutes. Something is taking off or landing somewhere on the globe, delivering critical surprise to personnel. And I can't give you a better example for those of you who will join the global power mission. Two B2, launched from White Air Force Base, 32 hours round trip, 16 air refueling to hit their targets within 10 seconds of their planned time over target. And some of you will go forward to make the fight against bound extremism, from which we, the United States Air Force, have over 70% of the strikes, 100% of the tankers, 90% of the ISR in the fight against bound extremism. You join a force today that enjoys the trust and confidence of a grateful nation. But I submit to you that that trust and confidence is not so much for what we do today, but it's for the shoulders we stand on of those who pass this Air Force to us. Our challenges are big, but they are not the largest challenges we face. And as you cross that long blue line, you join the ranks of those who've gone before. And so I have one question for you. Are you ready to join the ranks of the greatest Air Force and the greatest airmen the world has ever known? Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. General Volpe will now administer the oath of enlistment. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I state your name. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to regulations in the Uniform Code of Military Justice. According to regulations in the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you. The greatest treasure in our nation's arsenal, the newest airman of our United States Air Force. Airman, recite the Airman's Creed and remain in place with the departure of our official party. I am an American Airman. I am a warrior. I have answered my nation's call. 